get notifications, and stay updated every time I post a challenge podcast by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you all, and hope you enjoy. I do appreciate you having me, though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to give you everything I got. It's appreciate it. Well, <laughs> what's going on, everybody? Today I have a very special guest joining me. She needs no introduction, but she's the one and only Miss Car Maria. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Hey, I'm, uh, you know, glad I was able to get you on here. I had some recent guests uh, praise you quite a bit, so um, this is definitely an honor uh, getting to interview you. Aw, who is that? Tell me about it. Just what to name a few, uh, Cook was a big one I just recently had on. He's a, oh my God, the legend that should have been, but never got enough airtime, never got <laughs> enough seasons. I'm like such a Cook fan, and she, uh, she was with me at a time when I was still trying to figure out who the heck I was in the, in the whole world there, and we, uh, I learned a lot from her, so... She's yeah, awesome. I'd love to see her back. But mm. we'll we'll definitely get into that. But since you just mentioned, um, you know, being a different uh, person, I want to take it back to when you first started, which was obviously fresh meat too. We all know how you, um, you know, got onto that season. But I kind of want to ask you now. Um, so, being a fresh meat, obviously you got skipped straight to the challenge. But would you have liked to go through the whole real world process? And maybe if yes. you did, like, how do you feel like that would have uh, changed things yes. for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, a million reasons, yes. First of all, it's really cool to say that, I, now, looking back on it now, it's cool to say, you know, when people are like, what your, what's your original show? I could say my original show is The Challenge. Like, I was born on The Challenge. And so that's fun to say because a lot of people have to do other shows to get to the show that I was made on. Um, so, but before when I was first on Fresh Meat, that was never something to brag about because we got harassed. So bad, like nobody nowadays, people, their show is from, you know, the toilet, you know, toilet paper shopping spree. Like who knows what show they're going to pull people from now. You know what I mean? So everybody comes on from every show. Camilla came on. It wasn't even a show. And, and there's so many people coming in that nobody gets a hard time anymore from where they're coming from. Um, for me, coming on Fresh Meat, it was like, oh my God, it was, it was such like a cool kid click mentality of like, oh you're fresh meat, you're not a real challenger, like, you're not, re like, so, we were shit on pretty hard, um, and, plus, like, the way I was raised and everything, it was just, like, I'm such an only child, such a loner, like, not a group person, like, even in college, I had, like, one roommate for two years of it, and then I was, I had my own room for the rest of it, and it's, like, I'm just not, so being thrust into a house, and all of a sudden, like, having to share things and having people be everywhere and everybody's, you know, nobody's uh, aware of other people's privacy or needs or respectful. Everybody's just like, party, party, party. It was so much for me, whereas I think that, and competition. I don't know jack shit about competition. Like, I'm, I'm not athletic. I'm not, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. So that was, I was so out of my element in every single level. I'm just shocked that I was ever even asked that. But if I had an original season and I just got to explore myself, you know, let people get to know who I was, figure out who I was, you know, have a group of people that I could be close to, like the way that the real worlders did. Like if you did an entire season on the real world and then you got to do a challenge, generally you're put on the challenge with one of those people. So you have some sort of like a closeness, alliance, camaraderie. I mean, showing up on Fresh Meat, we had about a week in a tent with a bunch of strangers and, and then we were shoved into a house full of more people we didn't know. And I would have loved, loved to have had just so many benefits of having the real world experience before being right on the challenge. But looking back on it, like I said, I can say, hey, I was straight to challenge. <laughs> Challenger through and through. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like uh, maybe some of the other fresh meters, because um, believe it or not, I've actually um, interviewed actually most of them. Um, they might have been um, maybe more suited, I guess, whereas maybe if you had gone through a real-world season, you would have been, like, more groomed, I guess you could say, for the challenge. Sorry, I'm just twisted that. I'm like, um, who did you talk to on from my fresh meet? From my fresh meet or from fresh Yeah, meet yeah, from, from yours. Um, Nora's been on, Sandy, Pete, Vinny, like, it's Carly. It's been uh, pretty much most of them. I think, uh, you know, it's just down to you and Laurel now. 
You know what blows my mind is like, so Fresh Meat won. The only survivors of that were, um, well, like, Diem continued on for, for many seasons. Um, and who else? Uh, I mean, I guess, what, what did they have? Kenny, they had Evan. Kenny, they had Big Bobby Easy. Lee. Yeah, Big Easy carried on a couple, but, I mean, that's it. And then from my season, we had, I mean, we started, I would have, I loved Brandon. Brandon was like, oh, him, him, he was another one. People. I, I mean, I wish, I wish he would have been on, on so many more, th- but I think he was such a good guy, and I feel like that doesn't bode well, I guess you could say, because he really was, like, that's the only thing I could say about him, he was 100% real, he, I called, he was like the realest person I ever met, like, like, would always welcome you, give you a hand on and off the season, like, he was just such a good, good guy, I love him, um, Sandy was a riot i'm shocked like with her ridiculous like ditzy self like that she was never asked back um who else do we have you you mentioned mandy i think mandy just kind of went on and, and blew up was that it with her she just yeah she's got her. like a husband and kid now i believe yeah mandy she was a character um even Teresa. i know Teresa went on and i don't know how many kids she has now or what she's doing but I mean, she was actually athletic, beautiful, um, definitely could cause a little drama. And I'm just, I'm shocked that, uh, you know, and it's funny because it was me and Laurel in that tent in the corner together. Like my cot was right next to hers. And I remember when I first met her at the airport, like my feelings, I was like, I remember calling my mom before I had to get my phone. I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm looking at all these girls, mom. I'm not even worried. I'm fine. And all of a sudden, like Laurel walks in, I was like, shit. <laughs> I'm like, never mind, mom. <laughs> um, yeah, and then none of the guys, none of the guys carried on too. Nor was a beast athletically. He probably could have done some crazy stuff. Uh, that's it. I just remember being closest to uh, to Brandon. Mm, yeah, that seems to be consensus. Uh, Is it? Yeah. When I ask them like uh, who they kind of resonated with, it's usually Brandon. So you know, shout out Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Fresh Me Too was obviously, you know, a season that seems to uh, have resonated with a lot of the, you know, audience, myself included. But a rumor that kind of, I guess, I want to debunk now was when they drafted the, um, you know, obviously the veterans are picking their Fresh Me, a big rumor was that Darrell picked Laurel at first, and then they redid it and picked you. I, no, I, it's I, not a rumor. It's, it's what actually happened. So... He didn't pick her. Um, he called her out, and he goes, Laurel. He goes, he said, I forget what he said. Like, he didn't pick her. He said, because our stats were pretty comparable, and he wanted to pick her. But he asked me, he goes, Kara, he goes, how are you with, he goes, uh, why did it take you so long on the puzzle? Because for me, I kind of, I crushed the combine. I had, like, a blast. But when it came down to the puzzle, I was, like, like a deer in the headlights for some reason I couldn't figure it out um and he goes what he goes does you know why did that take you so long and I said something like I don't know I think I'm pretty good at puzzles I just had like a moment and he goes okay and he looked at Laurel and he looked at me and I think he said he ultimately I think he said it there too he chose me because if there was anything where he I would have to hang off from him because they've done things where you hold your partner on the last fresh meet they held their partner over a cliff I think or something I don't know or the duel I don't know um but he said if there's ever anything where you have to hold your partner over something or carry, you know, he wanted somebody smaller. So okay. that's why he ultimately chose me because he didn't think he'd be able to carry or lift or hold Laurel up. Like, I was just easier. On paper, we were pretty comparable. Um, so, yeah, and then he, he picked me. And then I uh, couldn't fucking do the number puzzle. So that's ultimately <laughs> what uh, sent our asses packing, man. Neither one of us could do those puzzles at all. Time up on every single puzzle. Every one of them. <laughs> yeah. All of them. So, but I, yeah. I always ask this uh, one question to pretty much most of the people that were on Fresh Me Too. We all agree, and we love the house, like gorgeous house. Like, so did you particularly like where you guys were to be staying? Oh yeah, the house was beautiful. I think that was the first and last house that I've seen that literally had a liquor cabinet full. Like, I mean, I, I can barely remember because I was only there for a few days, but. 
I remember there was a liquor cabinet full of like whiskey and tequila, like any type of alcohol you tell them, you're like, yeah, I want some uh, Jameson. Like they'll make sure you have it. Whereas uh, now we're only allowed vodka and beer and wine. Wow. <laughs> that was like the last time we were given that. That is. <laughs> That's what I remember. Anyways, my very short stay. Yeah, but I want to ask you, though, since we're talking about your short stay, did you expect to, um, you know, get a call back after that? Never. I literally left my bartending job. I was like, guys, I might be gone, you know, like, two months. I'm going filming. Like, I don't know when I'll be back. Literally back about, like, a week later. And they're like, uh, did you even leave? And I was like, yeah. I'm like, but I'm back. I'm like, so I'll probably never do that again. And then uh, whoever, whatever special god that that is to be, um, gave me a second chance. And Cutthroat was a show. <laughs> it was oh. <laughs> yeah, that was actually my next point. I was going to ask you because Cutthroat's a format that I love and a lot of people I've seen, you know, kind of uh, like wish that they brought it back. Did you um, like the three-team format, just the whole concept of Cutthroat? Oh, I loved it. I mean, Cutthroat, the challenges were sick. Um, the three-team format was really fun. Like, it wasn't, you know, the two format of War of the Worlds 2 where, where it can get a little muddy. So you had a smaller team. I loved and hated the secret voting format because that came really fun. I'm surprised they haven't brought that back since. Like, the secret voting? Because yeah. you can say anything to anybody's face. You can lie your ass off. I don't know if anybody took advantage of that, but you could say, yeah, of course, I'm going to vote for this person. And then when the votes come back and it's like two votes for this person, five votes for this person, and they're like, did you vote for this person? You'd be like, no, I voted for, the, I told you I vote this way. Like, you can, there's so much you can do with those private votings. Like, I love it. I think they should bring it back. 100%. I also think, I also think they really need to start bringing back the, if you come in last place, you're automatically in. Because that would stop people from trying to throw challenges all the time. Side note. <laughs> you just read my mind. I think a lot of people would agree with us, to be honest with you. I think that when they, the days that they were doing that, like, everything was, um, you know, it brings out, like, an overall, like, sense of urgency within yes. like because we saw i mean like obviously we'll get into this but we saw with this even this past season um when well, i feel like when people had their skull like obviously they're not like more inclined to try harder and like you know daily challenges and then it kind of as it dragged on seemed as though like you had like maybe one to two guys left that were going for skulls and those were the only two people seemingly trying in dailies I didn't uh, catch a lot of episodes, so I can't really, but, I, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm going to ask you, though, since, you know, you obviously, it was your first final in Cutthroat, you ended up holding your end of the bargain, but, um, you know, you had two, um, you know, teammates go down. Had they not gone down, do you feel as though you guys, that plays out differently, or do you think that... I do. Oh, you do? A thousand. I do, because... Uh, it was just funny because that that season, our team, Laurel, was trying to get rid of me and Luke. Like, right up until the final. She would have ran that final alone and had to, like, drag a body or a dead body completely alone without me and Luke there. Because, obviously, you've seen, like, the other two. Like, it was Sarah and Laurel that were trying to get rid of me and Luke the whole time. And it ended up being that Laurel needed me and Luke. Um, and I do feel like... You know, I don't remember, you know, what it looked like when you watch it, but I remember being in it. Um, it Sarah didn't want to quit. So she was just like, no, I'm not quitting. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. And instead of medical, you know, just being like, we, we're just taking you out of here. We're going to take you out of here and we're going to cut that time. I think that the, the time, it was just all, it was like, who's going to get to the finish line first? And at that point, like, when we're waiting and somebody has to keep stopping and puking and stopping and puking and stopping and puking and saying, you know, and dragging along because they're dying of heat exhaustion, that cuts into our time. And the same thing with, with Abram. He didn't want to quit, um, you know, and he gave everything he had in that first round, and he passed out, got taken away in an ambulance for heat stroke. And, um, yeah, you know, like, I feel like all that time that we waited – that we sat, you know, that he had to get the needles in his arms, that I wouldn't watch because I was freaking out. 
But um, all that time was our time. And so really at that point, like me, Laurel, and Luke were so far out, like there wasn't much we could do, really. Yeah. Everything yeah. else, I think we were doing pretty well, but that really took an exorbitant amount of time out of, out of us. Yeah, which is crazy because um, it seemed like you guys were pretty much the team to beat all season. Yeah, but isn't that usually how it works? You, don't <laughs> yeah. want, you really don't want to watch somebody dominate all season and then see him win a final. Come on. Especially when there's a couple that is married or just got married. I mean, it's, doesn't that yeah that that was like that the, a little bit more? <laughs> that was uh you know maybe the favorable uh you know storyline to play out. But like you guys were kind of unorthodox of a team, you know, like maybe not on paper you guys weren't supposed to really um you know do well. You kind of you get your team was sort of like a band of uh, misfits. We were we were the we were the band of misfits. Everybody made fun of us. So the fact <laughs> that we did we did win the majority of the challenges. I still have the TV from uh, the one that uh, the King of the Hill won. The mud pit, the that one. I still have the TV that that uh, Abram won from that. Wow. With that final battle against uh, Brad. Brad. Yeah, Brad. Hmm. It was crazy. That was a really, really cool season. I have to say, it was cool. Just yeah. the format, the way everything played out, the stories, you know, the 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 real drama that happened, the eliminations, like just everything about that season was. I think it's pretty underrated. Oh, 100%. I wish they would, uh, you know, bring it back. But, um, you know, another season that a lot of people really like me as well is Rivals 2. And now I kind of want to talk about that because obviously you were brought in, um, you know, as a replacement to be Cook's partner. But, like, a big thing that, um, you know, a lot of people have heard was that you were actually an alternate. And the people were speculating that it was um, you and Aia were actually supposed to be an alternate pair. Is there any, you know, truth to that? Because I've had her on here as well. I haven't heard that one. Maybe we were, uh, and maybe other people know, and I don't. Cause yeah, because she, she told me she was alternate. also an alternate. I mean, that makes sense. Um, that makes sense. But uh, I, I was an alternate for a couple of seasons. I was just the alternate that got lucky and got to come in and, and made a fucking show. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Rivals rivals too some people want to give me shit but it's like dude if i wasn't there you know who cook's partner would have been and she would have been gone a lot sooner i think yeah <laughs> um, we still went into eliminations we still kicked butt we won the last uh the last challenge that was super important right before the final i think paula was bawling her eyes out begging not to go into the elimination so that's why demon and Anissa had to go in against um who were the other two camilla and Camilla and Jemmy. Jemmy, yeah. So that's why that happened because Paula was just begging, please don't let me, in, don't put me in elimination. Um, and then, so after that, we, you know, I was the main brain. Like Camilla, I mean, not Camilla Cook is the horse, the workhorse. Like she can swim, she can carry, her endurance doesn't stop. I would like to say I'm better at puzzles than her. So even though my swimming, was slower to get us to the beach. I was the one that solved every puzzle, except for the Pythagorean theorem math one, which she thought to copy somebody else. <laughs> and that's how we were able to get through that one. But um, I think we were pretty even. And honestly, it just came down to the eating portion. And uh, Paula and Emily came in after us, and they left before us, and there was no catching up after that. Yeah, um, when I had Cook on here, she, um, you know, was uh, pretty vocal about, like, um, you know, her praising of you. And she said that if she were ever to get back on one, like, uh, she would be a rider for you. So, I mean, you know, that obviously, yeah, that that would play a lot into, you know, your favor, obviously, seeing as though she is. But uh, would you like to see her back? How do you think she would do? I, I text her. I beg her. I'm like, my cook, please come back to the challenge. Please come back. I'm like, just just message the producers and tell them you want to come back. I'm like, please. She's like, well, I'm getting married. Oh, well, I have a kid. And I'm like, come on. And honestly, like, I root for me through and through. Like, if you're a good person to me on and off, like, and I see who you are, like, I will always support and root for you. Like, I have no fear of strong competitors. I love strong competitors. Jenny? Sure, come back every time. I know you're an animal. And, like, if I ever was to win a final against Jenny, that would be, like, so well-earned. You know what I mean? Like, I don't – I'm not 
I support strong, good women that are good to me. So the only people I have problems for are people that, you know, I have problems with. It's like, it doesn't matter if you're strong, weak, or whatever. And it's like with cooks, I would a thousand percent welcome that competition and cheer for her and root for her. And if we had to go against each other or if we had to compete against each other in a final, like, it would just be all love. Because, like, she's a good person and a fucking phenomenal athlete. Phenomenal. Yeah. But, um... Who are maybe some other people that, like, maybe you, say Car Maria the viewer, who are some people that you would like to maybe see come back? Who else would I like to see come back? Yeah, say if you're a viewer. Um, let me think. You know, so random, but Carly. Like, I don't know what she's doing, but I don't know why I, the person eliminated first, got a second chance, and Carly, the big titty you know, crazy blonde, like, who won with Landon, like, how she didn't get a second chance. I just, I'm just curious. Like, I'm curious hey, I, about don't, it. I don't like, know if you, I don't know if you knew this. I mean, you, you might know better than we were. We pointed this out on um, our episode. I, I don't know if it was your, your Jersey. I think it was, um, I, th- was it like episode one that they had like, um, what was it? They, like, ironed on, like, the rest of uh, your name onto your jersey. Battle Car- of the Seasons. Yeah. It might have been Carly. Well, Carly said me. that she was called for uh, Battle of the Seasons. You so. know, life is crazy. I've, I've, been, I've been lucky. I've been really, really, really lucky. So, I mean, Carly would be a fun one to see back. Um, who else? Uh, Sydney. Do you remember Sydney? Yeah, I, she CJ's never got another chance. And she was a, I remember her. Sydney and Sandy were like my other two favorites. So I think like Oral and Teresa kind of gravitated. Mandy was like, you know, just kind of like didn't give a fuck. But it was like I was gravitated for the girls towards Sandy and Sydney. I thought they were like really funny. I loved their personalities. Um, who else hasn't been? I mean, obviously, Darrell. Like, Darrell oh. always. Always. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's the type of OG that is, like, still gorgeous, still ripped. Like, he ain't, you know, he, there's, he doesn't have, there's no dad bod on Darrell, for sure. I mean, I mean, he is, like, I mean, that is, I guess that is a dad bod. That is a ripped dad bod, because he's a dad. But, um, he, oh, my God. Darrell always, always would love to see him. And then, I don't know. I can't, I'm like racking my brain right now. I, I'd like to see Teresa come back. Teresa, yeah, she'd be a good one. I mean, she's a good athlete, for sure. Yeah, I think she's one of the more unlucky challengers in the, in the sense of, like, how things kind of played out for her on her seasons. I mean, she, yeah, yeah, I agree. But she also married, didn't she marry some, like, pro footballer? Like, she's kind of, <laughs> yeah. she's kind of living, like, the trophy wife <laughs> life, so yeah. I wouldn't call that unlucky because she could be me <laughs> you know what I mean? hey I, I don't think it i don't think it's that bad being you yeah. i think a lot of people would like to be car maria you know win the challenge a few times <laughs> i actually put out a little thing I, I was like what would you do if you were me for a day and literally 90 percent of my answers were eat donuts and pat my horse and i was like well i do that that's all i do anyway <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah but now, a, a big question that I kind of want to ask you, and this is maybe going to, um, you know, kind of, you know, put you back in time a little bit, but obviously on Final Reckoning, you and Ashley were on opposite sides of the fence, and um, at the time when she stole the money from Hunter, it seemed as though you disagreed with it, but now, having worked with Ashley and become friends with her on the last show that you did, um, where's your head at now in the whole thing, and maybe your... Oh, God. I I can't make up my mind on that, because even though I, I mean, actually get along now, um, for me, I'm, I'm thinking there's so many ways to think of that situation and that choice. It's all season, you know, if you didn't have your partner, you wouldn't have made it to where you are. In the final, if you didn't have your partner, you wouldn't have been in the situation to make the decision you made. Um, so your part and that, you know, and that person has, you know, they, 
they've got a family, they've got things they need to take care of. So like as a good human, you would you would say splitting the money is the right decision. At the same time, playing devil's advocate, you're technically with but against your partner in the final. Because it's like, you know, you could have half a million, you could have a full million. And it's like, if if Hunter beat her, would he have split it or would he have kept a million? It's like I, you know, I can't, I can't make that call unless I'm lucky enough to be in that situation to make that decision. And like I said, there's, there's so, I'm so back and forth on what the morally right thing to do is. Considering even if you hate that person, like you, you wouldn't have made it there without him. And then, you know, what the, the fuck you selfish person, they said I could do it. And if you beat me, then I wouldn't get to make this choice and I beat you. So I'm making the choice kind of decision. So it's like, I can't say. Honestly, I really yeah. can't. I really can't. I hope I get to be in that situation. One day. <laughs> That's a respectable answer. It's like one of those things. Like um, until you're in the situation, you just can't really pinpoint. Um, you know how it would go down. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, now kind of shifting towards um, you know, War of the Worlds too. I kind of want to ask you about like you know certain dynamics with um, you know, people from prior seasons that we kind of didn't really see um, you know, a whole lot of how it played out like. So on War of the Worlds 1, um, obviously, like, um, you and Zach, you know, went at it a little bit. But on War of the Worlds 2, we didn't really, um, you know, see much of, uh, you know, that dynamic. Like, what was your dynamic with Zach like during uh, War of the Worlds 2? Um, heading into War of the Worlds 2, Zach wanted to, I mean, Zach and Polly were talking. And Zach wanted to work kind of with Polly. Um, I remember, like, I, don't, I didn't really talk to Zach, but Zach and Polly would talk a lot. And I remember um, Zach, the things that he mentioned to me was just he wanted to get rid of Johnny and he wanted to get rid of Laurel. And he was a thousand percent on board with doing that. But when we got there, you know, he goes after, you know, the way Laurel embarrassed him on, you know, free or was it free agents were on the mountain and all that. And like the way that she talks down on him and makes fun of him, he's like, fuck that. I want her gone right away. Like, I'll help you get rid of her ass. Fuck her. Don't worry about it. So it was very like it was. Wes, Zach, and Polly that were going to be like, all right, we're all kind of in this together. You know, we'll get rid of Laurel and Johnny. And um, when we got there, it turns out Zach is working also with Laurel and Johnny. And Laurel's really good friends with Nani. And, you know, Zach and and, uh, Nani are, you know what I mean? So it's just like this whole thing. So he was just doing what he always does. And he just, this is, Zach just rides the fence. And he just plays both sides. That's what he always does. Um, it never makes a power move and he just likes to just hang out in the background, plant seeds, but never be the one to like, you know, do anything. Um, and so on that season, uh, Zach and Nani like never left their bedrooms. They were just like always in the bedroom, just like either in bed sleeping or just like, you know, she'd come out to smoke a cigarette. That's about it. Like they just were just like miserable in there especially when we started decimating the alliance they were just i mean people talk about me being miserable but you never got to see the other side you just (laughs) only got to see me and i wasn't the best i wasn't at my best but um you you get to see what you get to see you know yeah but um we just spoke about laurel but what about her what was the uh what was your thoughts on her you know coming back into the fold and maybe what's your stance on her now well, with Laurel coming in, I, my whole stance is just, like, I'm, you know, she's on my team. And I've been on teams with Laurel. And you want her on your team because she's strong, she's smart, she's, you know, she's got good strategy, um, she's good, she's a good teammate. Um, she makes you feel confident when you are in the situation of being her teammate. She won't, she usually, I mean, I can't remember her exactly, like, belittling me when I was her partner. She always kind of knew how to like encourage me while we were in that partner situation competing um but like she never pulled like a zach like what she did to zach on me i don't remember so i wanted her on my team and i'm like if i go to a final and i win with laurel fucking vindication great like she is somebody you want on your team she's strong and um so i remember being helped i'm like you know i'm not i'm not gonna fuck with her i'll just leave it alone so as a teammate yeah i want her on my team Am I going to talk to her? Are we going to be best friends? Are we going to hang out? 
probably not, but I'm not going to, like, I'll just kind of, like, stay away from her is all. Just stay away from her. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of people were saying, you know, a lot of things about her, doing crazy shit, like, writing stuff in her notebooks and just doing her thing. And, you know, I just kind of stayed away. I was like, just let it be, let it be. And I think that if Laurel had gone into the season with her sights set on winning rather than her sights set on me and trying to get me out and send me home as somebody on her team, then she would have ended up in the final. You yeah. know, and even, even when it came to Johnny, like when it came to, like we were, when we found out that we were on his team, it was like, we don't fuck with him. We're not going to fuck with him. He's good. Do I want to get to a final with Johnny on my team? He's got a great track record of finals. Yes. But when the opportunity strikes, if he comes at us first, it's lights out. And that's what happened. So on that challenge, um, the mud, the ball with the mud and the fire hoses and stuff like that, that challenge, you know, the whole bus ride up, it was Johnny, Laurel, um, Bear, Georgia, like all yelling and laughing in the back of the bus, basically making fun of, it was like me, Cam, Kaylee, Polly, all sitting at the front of the bus, just being quiet. And they were all loud and yelling in the back of the bus, like on the way to the challenge, like, oh, oh. Oh, what if we put Kara and Ninja against each other? Like, just kind of like poking and poking and poking. And I'm like, these motherfuckers, they really. And and uh, Johnny's like, yeah, remember when Laurel and Kara went against each other? Oh, what if we did that again? We know how the last time ended up. Like, totally being like assholes to us as we're sitting there quiet. Like, what? Like, what the fuck? We're already, you know, like, what's going on? And um, it's like, we're going in this to win. Like, we're supposed to win. We're Team USA, right? We're trying to win together. And when we got there, like, I knew something was fishy as soon as Laurel was acting like a wall. And in, I was like, is she this bad? Like, is she, does she actually suck? Or is she trying to, like, stop me from going up this hill? And uh, I called her out, and, and she was, her and Johnny were throwing the challenge because they wanted to get rid of me. And Johnny campaigned around the entire house to get rid of me. So he did the first move. He was the one that was like, Un unapologetically running around the house being like trying to bully Esther and uh and Idris into putting me in and just like any way he could to like put me against Ninja and uh didn't happen he <laughs> saved the day <laughs> and uh and gave uh Ninja what she wanted it came through yeah anyway so it is what it is he pulled the first move they threw a challenge to get rid of us and we just Got rid of them. I don't give people two chances. You don't put the bullet back in the gun and say, here, try again. Fuck you, <laughs> bye. Never. Um, yeah. But now, I know you mentioned not, you know, watching a whole lot of episodes, but I'm sure maybe you have, like, somewhat of a thought of, like, the uh, concept, I guess you could say, of the Red Skull this season. Um, do you have any thoughts maybe on the uh, format, if you have any, you know, recollection of maybe what you've seen of it? Um, from what I hear, uh... I think in in I think that there was a lot of missed opportunities by the challengers to take advantage of it. I think it would be really interesting to see how things would have to change if um, people with skulls went back in, you know, and then there were no more skulls at the end. Like I just wonder how things would have kind of played out, how many people would have ended up in the final why Johnny wasn't put back in at any point, you know, before the final, um, knowing how, you know, how his track record in finals. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think there's just a lot of missed opportunities by the challengers to do more. Yeah, that's all. De definitely. That's all I can. <laughs> but I think in theory that the Red Skull theory, it's, it's pretty badass. But it also takes away a lot of, I don't enjoy watching people being like, yeah, I want to go in. Yeah, I want to go in. Like, I like seeing all the, the drama and the backstabbing and, and the politicking that goes on with people trying not to go in. Because I feel when the politics of people going in, it's just like, yeah, I want to go in. It's like, oh, you want to go in? Okay. Like, it was just, it was so, the, you know, like, I think the, the format, the idea of it is awesome. I think the way the challengers, what they did with it when they were competing, it just, I don't think it, uh, 
I think they could have done more. That's all I can say. Yeah. Based on, based on the couple episodes I saw and what I hear. Yeah. The um, what kind of has made the challenge like the challenge is the politics. You know, um, people trying to avoid eliminations, and I think that maybe taking away that element, um, maybe isn't like in the best interest of you know what was going on. But I mean, you know, it is what it is, right? I think it was definitely born from the fact that uh, with our alliance that we made the season before um, and us holding and taking care of each other right to the end, you know, without with literally everybody in that final not seeing an elimination with the exception of uh, D and Ninja, I think, and Tori and Jordan. That was it. Oh, no, yeah. D didn't see one either. D didn't Ninja, see one. Tori and Jordan. The only three people in that entire final had seen an elimination, and I think it, it angered the gods, and so they, they put the hammer down and said, here's a red skull, bitch, and I wasn't there to take it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I am the type of person that, having gone in, still at this point, even with not going into as many eliminations in the last few seasons since I finally figured it out, um, and nobody's called me out, uh, so it's not my fault that I win when I'm supposed to, like on those purges and shit, but... Um, I think that people who make it to a final, no matter how you get there, I wouldn't call it skating. And that pisses me off when people say that, because even when it came down to free agents and some people were just lucky enough to always pick the never, I, I was the one that, you know, stabbed myself in the eyeball every time. But if you flipped it and you, you didn't have to go in. Whether it's politics or whether it's luck in that point that you don't have to go in and you make it to a final, Nani and two of the three girls in that final on free agents did not see an elimination. Devin and Nani did not see an elimination. Laurel was the only one that went in a couple. I don't yeah. know how she went into. But, yeah. So, and, but I still wouldn't say, I remember in that moment, I was so angry. I was like, Nani, Devin, I was like, they didn't even have to see elimination. I was in fourth. Like, I remember being angry because I was the one in the fucking elimination and I didn't get to go to the final, but that's my fault. And so in hindsight and what I've learned going forward, it's like, fuck everybody who says, oh, let's see people skate. It's like, if you work hard on the off season and I'm not a friends person, I don't make a million friends. I don't do that, that type of politicking somehow in the house lately it's worked out, but um, if you're doing the work of politicking, if you're winning a challenge, if you are winning a purge, if you are friends with the person who's winning and they don't pick you, if you are scary enough that when somebody's down there and you're available to go in and somebody doesn't pick you, if you flip a card and you don't pick the kill card, if all those things line up and you get to a final, you didn't fucking skate. I don't care whether it's luck whether it's strategy, whether it's just being a good athlete, like if you make it there, you did something right and you earned your spot there. So I'm going to leave it at that. And like skating is just, I don't believe in it. I don't believe that's a thing. I think if you get there, you earned it one way or another. Mm. Yeah. I, uh, you know, mic drop. <laughs> um, but um, I appreciate you taking the time today to, um, you know, let me interview you. This is uh, quite the honor, and I uh, look forward to uh, uploading this. Aw. That's it. I was having a fun conversation. What else can we talk about? <laughs> Thank you I was going to ask you about Big Brother, though, too. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about Big Brother, because I'm about to watch it. Is that, it's on in, like, 15 minutes, right? Uh, I mean, I'm not, like, a huge, you know, fanner, uh, but people are kind of, you know, trying to, uh, you know, get me into it. But they wanted me to ask maybe, you know, maybe some brief thoughts of uh, yours on Big Brother. Maybe your pick and, um, you know, whether or not you do Big Brother. I would never do Big Brother, um, <laughs> as I would never do Survivor. Um, the only reality shows I think I would jump in on is I would love to, I wish I had the talent to be born again as a man and go on RuPaul's Drag Race or just be a judge on it. Um, I, w I would do Cupcake Wars as a judge, um, but I like to be fat, showered, and comfortable and slightly glamorous. Like, I don't want to have to survive and I don't want to, Big Brother, I would lose my fucking, I would lose my mind. Um, so bless those people who can do it. Um, I've never watched Big Brother or season of it ever in my life until Cody, is, until we found out Cody was going to be on, and that's Polly's brother. And 
it's so exciting for me to watch not only Cody, I have to cheer for the family. That's hopefully my future family there, you know? Um, so I'm cheering for him. And then um, it's really cool that Day uh, and Bailey are on it too. Because like, I, I mean, I don't, I've never met Bailey, but like she was really sweet to me. She had reached out um, to me in my DMs a while ago and was like, hey, like, um, she said something like, hey, you know, I, I know a lot of people say a lot of things, but I like to make my decisions about people based on how my interactions with them. And I was like, you know, I was like, I really appreciate that. And same right back at you. So like, I was just supporting her and, um, and then me and Dave uh, we made up before she took off. I just, I was just feeling like, I've been really feeling lately, like I want to drop any baggage I've ever had. I want to drop everything because I got so lost in not having a break ever. It was like just back to back to back to back and final, 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 final. So it was like, I never left early and got like an extended break. I was just there for the maximum amount of time every time. And I just got so lost in what reality was um, and held on to so much anger for so many things that who the fuck cares? It's a game. Um, and I've just been really trying to like, let go. So Dave, I was just feeling, I was just feeling it one day and I just messaged her and I was like, Dave, I was like, for what it's worth, I'm like, everything we've been through, I'm like, I'm sorry, like, you know, I just wish you the best, we're still, because I was thinking of her too, because it was, it was around my birthday and her birthday, it's both in May, I think, I forget when I messaged her, but I was just feeling some type of way, so, yeah, so we squashed the beef, um, and I wish, I'm rooting for all of them, so, it's really exciting seeing people that, you know, and seeing other people get tortured, and have to like deal with politics and drama and backstabbing and stress. And I just get to sit on my couch eating my ice cream and being like, this is great. <laughs> um, probably should get used to it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But, um, okay. you know, thanks again for uh, taking the time to do this. I look forward to putting this out there and I, uh, you know, hope the viewers out there, uh, you know, enjoy it as well. Yeah. So, Thank you for having me. It's always fun. Take care. All right. You too. Bye. Bye bye.